then for all of us to put in our effort towards peace. And Lord, we have to also contribute towards sustainable peace. So we need to all to come on board to do that. And he asked us to expand this talk and others into the mining communities. Mr. Azobari, we're grateful and we'll take on we'll take on board all your contributions. Now going on, we're going to take the first presentation. And the first presentation is on the topic understanding the root causes of conflict and violence, extremism, and the importance of engaging youth in conflict prevention and countering violent extremism. Hmm. That's a big one. That is a really big one. And who else to do this talk for us? We have a honorable amongst us. He was born on the 24th of October 1941 in Kumasi and was educated at Opokuwari Secondary School. He also attended the University of Ghana and graduated in French and Latin as a subsidiary subject. He worked in security services and served in seven administrations in Ghana. From, 19, from, sorry, from 2001 to 2008, he was Ghana's National Security Coordinator and Cabinet Minister responsible for security. Ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, who else do us this honor than our honor Mr. Francisco Kupuku, the former National Security Coordinator of Ghana. Please, with a round of applause, let's welcome you to the podium to do us this very important topic. Please, we can do better. We can do better. Thank you. Nana, Chairperson, Most Reverend, uh, dear fathers, and the youth, the future of this country. I hope that this meeting becomes practical and in a way bring, a, bring some commitment from you because it's a very serious subject, the national security of this country. And I never realized the seriousness of the work until I became the head of the security of this country. Because it's not just a human commitment, it is a spiritual one. Why is it a spiritual one? Because if you are the head, you look at the oath that you are going to take upon, a, upon assumption of the national security job. Even right from the beginning, the day you join the service, you take the oath of secrecy. And it's in the name of God. And then, when you are sworn in as a minister of security of the country, you take another oath. And then I look at the constitution. I see that the preamble, even before you go to any article of the Constitution. It talks about the name of God. The name of God, even before Article 1. So it's a very serious commitment. And why did the framers of the Constitution decide to do this? Why did they bring God into the Constitution? And then the first article, they talk about the sovereignty of the people. That is the people that you serve. So in the first place, the framers of the Constitution realized that Ghana is a faith country. That all the religions, Christians, Muslims, our traditional religion, all have the same commitment. So the framers were very wise that if the Constitution really is going to be the life of this country, then we must begin from the acknowledgement of God in the preamble. 
So it's a very serious oath. So if you are called upon to serve in the public, you have a very serious challenge. And I believe that national security has to do with the life of the country. The protection. The protection of the people of the country. And then, later on, we move towards what you call good government. So you are, you are not just there to protect the territorial integrity of this country from terrorists and all those who may destabilize the day-to-day -day level. And I want to draw your attention on this matter. See what is going on around us? What is going on around us? Let's look at Burkina Faso, what is going on. They are going through a period of instability. At the moment, the terrorists have virtually taken over the country. Minimum of 60%. So you can imagine that apart from the big towns of this country, talk about the capital of Kumasi, Tabra, the Cape Coast, those are the places being controlled by the government. The rest you can't go outside. You can't go to the farm. You, in some places, you can't go to church. You can't go to the mosque. Look at what is happening in Sudan. The number of the population moving up. So let's put this discussion in context. But I talk about commitment because governance of a country is between good and evil. Either you are serving the country or you are serving evil. And it's a serious hazard. And in life, we don't reflect on the most important thing. We organize seminars. We love good education. We like all the skills. But if you go through the constitution, first of all, you take the preamble, and then it talks about the respective rules the rules of the executive that this commitment from the preamble of the constitution is to carry out the executive, take the president, ministers, security services, the rest who are supposed to implement the vision, the security vision of this country. So the executive, they are to execute all that is contained in the document. And this constitution, you say the constitution is the highest law of the land. Any law that you make must come from the constitution. So when you are making any other law, it must be rooted in the constitution. So everything we are doing to be carried out according to the norms, according to the good and bad stated there, and all the constitutions to tell us the various functions that we do to preserve the country. So security is protection of the country from terrorists, from all the happenings. But, but we then move during the military regimes, it was regime protection. Protect the military man who has taken control. So regime protection. And the first thing, please, I served in seven different governments including during the time of military government in my young days. And the first thing you hear when there's a coup in this country is the suspension of the constitution. Why? Because they know they are not going to do the right thing. You have to suspend the constitution. And then what you do, you come out with what you call decrees. So the decrees are to protect the regime. So now, national security is not regime protection. It is about good governance. And the good governance goals are all stated in the Constitution. So if I'm a security minister, by all means, I have to and should be assured that terrorists are not going to uh, come into the country, that we are not going to allow situations as they exist in the neighboring countries to happen here, to be able to prevent disorder, conflict, 
you must govern well. Otherwise, you are going to have conflict. Because we live in a diverse society. Different groups. Diverse, different groups. Religious, cultural, ethnic, and all of you, we are different. So we must ensure that there is justice for every of these groups. Otherwise, we are in conflict. So to prevent conflict situations on a day-to-day basis, you need to have national and local government. And that is why during our time, I was the first to appoint regional security coordinator. Why? Because I cannot be in a trial and solving local problems. So he is here as advisor to the regional minister in charge of the region. So in a way, he is the uh, the president is the chair of the National Security Council. So if it's decentralized, that means in the western region, the security here, and the regional security coordinator is the one who advises the minister about the happenings, about the challenges of this region. So security, national security is for good government. Territorial integrity, but basically to identify the challenges nationally vis a -vis our relationships abroad and also the issues that can lead to conflict. And unfortunately, what we see, what contributes to conflict and all the extremism is the fact that we are all engaged in a local way. And most of our, our evils are from look away situation. Something is going on and you don't want to see. See, it's the, like the case of the Good Samaritan. He didn't want trouble. If you go and take this wounded person, you have to take him to hospital. You have to do this. Why do you get involved? So pretend that you have not seen it. If there's galaxy, hey, don't go and speak about it. Because you'll be in trouble. You, the man is very powerful. So pretend that you have not heard it. So most of the insecurity in the country is the fact that we all look away. We see the same coming. We see the causes. The causes of the problems are coming. Oh, we are too young. This one, when we grow up, we are going to solve the problem. Forgetting that if you grow up and there is instability, you are not going to enjoy a normal life. So please, it is a serious matter, and a conference like this must be able to bring you the commitment to save your country. So it is not separation of God from Caesar. No. Jesus gave that return because the Jews didn't mean well. If he had answered in the wrong way, the Romans were going to destroy his mission. That is why he said, if you believe in Caesar, then serve Caesar. If you believe in me, serve me. So I don't believe, personally as a Catholic, I don't believe in the interpretation that you separate what you do in public life from your religious life. You can separate it. You can separate it. I give an example that even the beggars on the street, if one is able to get 50 cities and his fellow beggar receives nothing and he buys Coca Cola, he has a duty to share with the fellow beggar. So responsibilities go that low. We will be judged according to our circumstances. And so the commitment we are made in the Constitution, please let's be very careful because the commitment is binding on all of us. It is binding. So the current challenges are due to the fact that the wrong situation, radicalism begins with people experiencing injustice. So there are different levels of radicalization. The level where people see wrongdoing and by and by they may join low-level demonstrations. And if it goes on, you think it is forgotten. It gets to a point when radicalization translates into extremism. 
But the person says we cannot use normal methods to make correction. So, they are looking for the extremists from other countries and other groups, and they will join. And also, we don't create situations which will be exploited. At the moment, talking about chief sensi areas in the north, about five of the areas are very close to the terrorist groups outside. And at the moment, they are trying to get local recruits. And where do they get them? People who are angry. Who are angry. And they say the devil has worked for either man. People who are angry at the recruits. If I come to Western region trying to recruit, I will look for foreign disputes that, where there are challenges, where people are angry, where people are unemployed, where people don't know what to do, where people are on drugs, where people want to get away, whatever it is. I'm taking you to a place. Some university students have gone into these groups outside. ISIS, they have been there identified from some of the universities. Why? Because they have nothing to do. So if you are taking me abroad with a ticket, I will go. So they are looking for local recruits. And I can I tell you that 2002, when I was the minister, Boko Haram started here. Started here. 2002, the same time as Nigeria, what happened? Because of religious tolerance and because the imams were not experiencing any discrimination, national policy was friendly, they did not succeed yet. I was aware that they were sleeping in the mosque from Saudi Arabia trying to convince them but the imam said, we don't have a problem here. We are not being persecuted. So they were able to talk to the youth. That is why Boko Haram didn't gain any roots here. But I can tell you that they were here. And there are a couple of people who come here, terrorists. They come and rest. When they are tied in their countries or they are looking for them, they come. But we don't always arrest them. Because we want to find out whom they are meeting. To your own policy in trying to stop local disputes, if security agencies use force and violence, it will drive people to radicalism. So, in trying to solve the problem, if your ways are not just, you are in trouble, you are going to encourage more people. So, handling of issues can create problems. So the challenges are there. The challenges are there, but we need commitment to the Constitution. Because if you do not follow the norms of the Constitution, you are creating security problems. And also, commitment. Fortunately, we have commitment. And if those who are committed to their faith, the Muslims who are going for violence are not following the true Muslim teaching. Some of us have lived with Muslims and their commitment to God's mercy. Religion, Muslim religion is mercy. The Christian religion is mercy. Even African religion is mercy. If you are in the village, you go to somebody's farm, you tell them your plantain is ripe water. So it's a society of mercy, and we must remain so, but the devil has work for either man. We must create the policies that will not push people into extremism. So there are issues that you will discuss, that you can bring up. If I want to go through all what happened, in the past, we will need about uh, one year here. But let me go through before I finish 
go through, uh, you see, we need to have a historical background. The, the reason why there is concern, it's not just current, but it's historical. Let me go through the challenges we had in the sub-region during my days. After independence in 1966, there was a coup in this country. We were through in Chroma. So after this coup, the country was divided. You would be unfortunate if you were an Izema. Because the president was an Izema, so when he was overthrown, all Izema became target. So you have to either change your name. So this is the sort of society. Members of his political party were hunted down. In fact, one was one person called Boy Moses. He was put in a cage. He was put in a cage and paraded, and people were jubilating. They were cheering. I have lived through cases when the generals, and I can tell the whole public because I was in charge of Accra. They were never tried. Nobody was tried. Those executed. And I'm sure the military officer here will tell you the happenings in this country. Those of you who were too young or maybe not born, what happened, you couldn't believe it. Somebody came to your car, came to your house, and asked you for the receipt for your fridge. If you didn't produce the receipt, he took the fridge away. So please, we've had a bad history in this country. So when these issues are being debated, some of us, they bring sadness to us. And at the end of the day, I was in Accra, so I was a witness. At the end of the day, when it was the time to hand over, we said the time has come. We said 24th October, 1979, now you have to hand over. He said, hey, we have been advised that we may be tried. I said, oh. Why are you afraid to be tried? If you did the right thing, why are you afraid to be tried? They were. If you also do, don't do something, we are not going to go. What can we do? So we went for what you call transitional provisions. That all those who serve in the regime will not be tried in the future. Before they agreed to go. So the point I'm making is that it did not work. Because if you take the statement that was written when Jerry Rollins was arrested for trying to overthrow the government, he was complaining about military getting involved in politics. Because he said it has made, it has corrupted some of our officers. And I know it because the late Namfuri and I were in, in charge of the interrogation. So we know exactly what he wrote. He said the military involvement, and that is why, so there must be a house cleaning exercise. This was when he failed in that point. <coughs> there must be, before they come back, we will not let them come and take their promotion. There must be house cleaning. That is why I want to stay the cool. So it's not against civilians. It is to have these officers who have taken position try. So that is what. So then Friday we did the last interrogation. Monday morning it was on the radio. So look at subsequent events. So if you take Nigeria, 1966, there was a coup. February, there was a coup in Ghana. The same in 66, a few months, there was a coup in Nigeria. 1972, there was a coup in Ghana. And then another one, 78, the head of state, General Champong, was at a meeting and he was surrounded by the other members with the help of bodyguards and he was overthrown. 
Because the security services couldn't go to the meeting to rescue him. So, 75, there was a coup in, in uh, Nigeria. So, you see, copycat. When it happens here, it happens in Nigeria. 78, there was a coup at uh, 78, I just a champion school. And then, 79, we have AFRC. But Nigeria then followed uh, 85. The coup against Buhari. So it's all the countries replicate these events. And that is why we are concerned about the happenings outside. And as I say, they are looking for the youth. They are not succeeding so far because of workshops such as this and our own policies. But let us not take things for granted because they are waiting for the suppression. And we are hoping that there is participation, both at national level, local level. And as I said, if I want to go through all the events of the past, we cannot end this conference today. But the hint I'm giving you is that conditions can change things radically. When we were warning three years before the coup in uh, 1979, and I remember we had meetings on for meetings. They said, oh, Ghana, there is Rum Moja. Please, I could not believe in 79 that we were dealing with Ghana. To the extent that even when the generals were going to be executed, people were cheering. I never believed. And I remember efforts being made to stop the who are the last to, to stop the execution. But for St. Catherine Church, when the priest said this, the person who was to stop it, they, they were so angry that they took them to the rage and no trial. They were executed here in Ghana. Who would believe it? And yet, we knew that if we didn't stop certain things, it was going to happen. So please, let's take the context. The context is that we've seen it before. So all of you have commitment. It is not just at national level, at local level. And that is why there's a security coordinator here. When you have these meetings, please, we will be able to come and make a contribution. But I'm giving 20 minutes, and uh, that is what I can say. It's a warning. Take these meetings seriously. Discuss know about the Constitution, because it's a very beautiful document. What is our responsibility from head of state, from the security being organized? Security in the network throughout the country, and we have to solve problems. It is not about protecting people, it is about ensuring that governance works to do with corruption, to do with illicit financial flows, to do with tax evasion, to do with fair decisions of chief censing. So every issue comes under the purview of national security. All decisions, corrective measures, creation of employment. If you have young people who are not working, it's the responsibility, not just of the chiefs, but of the local people. We used to have town development association. If there is something happening in your village, you have a responsibility. It is not there, the president. So when there are these challenges, I will meet it in our locality, in our town, to try and solve the problem. Don't wait until that your son or your daughter becomes a terrorist. It's too late. Don't let them be alienated from society. Take decisions, else they will go for drugs, they will go for weapons, and it's destabilization. So please be part and parcel. Let everybody take a decision. Let, why should you be in a situation when over 90% of our poetry is imported? It's imported. That is not good governance and it's not just responsibility of central government. Locally, we have responsibility. Let's meet to address issues. And that is why we are feeling the direction is private sector. 
is private sector. I don't believe the next few years the government is going to be able to solve this problem. It won't happen. Because we have loaded everything onto central government. Now it's time for us to try and find solutions. When I see what is happening to graduates, I cry. Because we came out in a period when you, we walk straight from the campus into jobs. It is not happening. So please, we have to shift into local government as an addition to whatever the government can afford. But where we are now, no. And I don't want to blame it on any particular government. We have failed in governance as a country. And I don't have any doubt. The stories are replicated. And what we do is to focus on what went wrong and not focus on ourselves. Please, please, let's find solutions. Let not the focus be on the past misdeeds. Let's correct past misdeeds. So uh, the, the future leaders of this country, I pray that you have commitment to make a difference, to, to be able to identify what you can do for society. I find it very, very guilty when I'm encouraging people to do things. But you never know. Whatever the challenge is, you'll be somewhere where you can make a big difference and ensure the stability of this country. Thank you very much. Ho, ho, ho. Wow. Please, let's put our hands together again. Who else could have done it better than the former national security coordinator of the country? I don't know what you learned, I don't know what you wrote down, but a few of the things that I heard, I'm gosman, I'm sure, that good governance is one of the causes of that conflict. I've never thought about that before. It never crossed my mind, ever. Did we hear the warnings he gave? And as you, that goes for us. I'm surprised that responsibility is spiritual, even for the oath of secrecy. My brothers and sisters, what did we hear this morning? Who ever took that look away attitude to cause conflict? It's none of my business. No reason. One of the things that he said that it shocked me to the bone was that in 2002 we had to come around in Ghana. Wow. I'm sure if it was announced on the national radio, we would have run away and leave them here. Because nobody wants to hear that name, Bukum Haram. Please, let's try it together again for him. That was good. Before we continue, I want us to acknowledge the presence of these organizations and people that I'll be mentioning. And if I mention your name, please give us a wave. Um, I know we have the Ghana Police Service here. Ghana Police Service. They are not here. Ghana Immigration Service. Thank you, Ghana Immigration Service. Please let's stand together for them. We also have St. John's School. Hey, you are coming to Faith and Venture, right? So yesterday we saw some of the activities in town. St. Mary's Secondary School. Yes. Thank you for coming. As we support the girls. Where are they? Oh, okay. Thank you for coming. GSDS. Right. Thanks for coming. You man. You man, oh, only one person, no, two. Thank you for coming. TTU, one man thousand. Good, thanks for coming. Now, understand we have the youth wing of the NDC here. The youth wing of the NDC. We also have the youth wing of the NDP. Where are they? The youth wing of the NDP. Okay, we have the SDA check. SDA Church, thank you. We also have a rest from the Deeper Life Church. Deeper Life, one and thousand. Good. Then we have these youth groups also. No mistake. Wow. No mistake. No mistake. 
Can we have a Yabu youth for development? Yabu youth, welcome. And we have the, is it the IC or DC Development Club? CDU. No, CDU is different. I have, is it the IC or DC Development Club? Are they here? So, oh, one man, okay. Big three factors. Wow. Um, Frank Bella Foundation. Frank Bella Foundation. Okay, association of people living with disability. Association, you're welcome. We also have CDU Youth Club. CDU Youth Club. The Millennium Opportunity Project. Millennium Opportunity, they are the back there. We also have, is it Ghana Federation of Disabilities, SDMA? Good, thank you for coming. Then we have MOP, I don't know what it stands for, MOP. Thank you for coming, MOP. It's a man youth association. Also at the back, thank you. Achievers Youth Club. Achievers Youth Club, you welcome, and we have Para Sports. Para Sports, okay, you welcome as well. Then we also have some Catholic societies here with us, CYO. CYO, you welcome, forgotten country, right? Mass Service Association, where are they? Mass Service, okay, Mass Service, you welcome, 9th of Marshall. 9th of Marshall, are you here? Good, you welcome. Then Cadet of Junior Zuari of Knight of St. John International. Yeah. You welcome. Charismatic Renewal. Charismatic Renewal. Thank you and you welcome. Quack. Quack. I don't know which particular parish, but I see Quack. Then you have Catholic Women Association. Catholic Women. We have Catholic Men's Association as well. Then I'm seeing Cosra. Our customer members here, thank you for coming. Pax Romana, Yuma. Pax Romana, Yuma, you welcome. Then we have Pax Romana from TTU. 